Hey everyone, Sari in here. Welcome to the highly requested Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender action. Uh, I played a bit of this on stream a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it should be its own series. So, here we are. This is a cyberpunk bar-themed visual novel, and if you enjoyed Coffee Talk, I think you'll like this one too. Valhalla is available on Steam right now if you'd like to try it out yourself, and I'll leave that link in the description. Alright, let's start a new game. Alright, thank you for playing Valhalla. This game is best played getting comfortable. Grab some drinks, some snacks, and enjoy. Alright. Anna. Psst. Hey, over here. Boo. How's that for an entrance? Hmm. Come on, Joe, look sharp. The game's starting and the player needs a good first impression of its main character. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend and the bar will eventually close. And I'll admit my little prank on you might have gone a little bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the brighter side of things. I have no idea what the brighter side of is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that parcel you just got. See ya! <sighs> oh. Oh, it's just a dream. Hmm? There's something near the door. Chapter 1 Primera Ooh, what is this? Your membership to Shining Fingered will automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least 800 by then. Make sure to save your data using the Life Backup app. Ooh, the Augmented Eye. Okay. Uh, so who was that letter from? Nobody. Hold to unlock. Ooh, I see. I wonder if I can turn the sound effects down a bit. I think that's better. Oh, Jill? Mass emigration continues as Wonderlanders are the newest threat. Cyborg and Heels returns next year. Ah, uh, okay. Did you leave? Not without you. I don't know if I'll read all of this. With inflation among the highest in the world, constant shortage of basic groceries, rampant violent crime, Glit City's citizens look for a better life in other countries. Quincy, however, isn't happy with this. They learned in our schools and university. In universities, the Prime Minister said during a talk with the Augmented Eye. But they apply what they learned somewhere else, and I find it rather insulting. Okay. Wonderlanders. If you thought Alice Rabbit was good at cracking the most complicated security protocols in the world, then this new group will certainly blow your mind. They've yet to make an impact as big as Alice Rabbit, but they seem to be aiming very high with the recent threats issued against Prime Minister Quincy. We hold full access to Quincy's email network and release the whole database this January, the group declared during a stream. I don't think the Prime Minister is having any of it. The people behind Wonderlander seem to enjoy dressing in all kinds of rabbit costumes during the stream. From Anthro to Bunny Girl, the purpose was to show the love and respect they have for Alice Rabbit and their role in today's politics. We want to follow their example while having some fun. Not sure if this will go anywhere, but we'll be there to tell you if it does. wonder what Alma thinks of this whole thing. Cyborg in Heels returns next year to the Super Silver Thunderdome. The popular show Cyborg in Heels returns to the dome this March, with tickets going on sale in January. A massive stage show about a cyborg fighting terrorism while wearing heels. <laughs> okay. What's not to love about it? It's a cyborg wearing heels, cutting stuff? A 
It's literally something we've never seen before. A niche market I'm willing to capitalize on. His acting is an unnatural. I don't think he cares about the rules of nature anyways. Can we change the music? Ooh. can save. Uh, I think that was from stream. Not sure. Alright. I suppose we can go to work. Tuesday, December 13th. Good evening. Ah, uh, hey there, Jill. Hmm. Oh, hey, John. Uh, when will you admit you have a John face, Gil? When, when you let people call you Jules. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Uh, where's Boss? Mm, don't know. She went out to buy some stuff and. Did you hear what I just told you? Uh, you said something? Yes, that you look distracted. Very. Very distracted. It's nothing. I'm just thinking about stuff. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful, and... Let's see. I need to turn the music down a bit. Ah. There's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to... myself. Oh, I can change the channel. That was weird. Not to mention the fact that two days ago, I found out the bar is at risk of closing. So not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. On top of that, neutering four left me with a completely empty wallet, and I'll get evicted if I miss rent again. And there are all the beer cans around my apartment, and... <laughs> Jill! Uh, sorry, did, did you say something? Can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics then, shall we? Just in case. Oh. If you can make me a piano man, I'll skip the rest. But bear with me for a second here, okay? <sighs> Let's start with a sugar rush. Look for the recipe using the navigation bar in the recipe book in the top left, okay. You can also sort drinks by flavors like sweet or types like manly. Alright. Drag the number of ingredients from their cells to the shaker in the center. <sighs> Go. When done, press the mix button and then press it again to stop mixing. Click the serve button or the drink itself to serve it and that'll be all. Oh, but if the drink looks messed up, you'll need to reset and try again. You can press reset at any time, even while the shaker is moving. Don't be afraid to use it. <sighs> Gil, I'm the one who went through the formal BTC instruction. Then this should be no problem. <sighs> Alright, Gil wants either a sugar rush or a piano man. If I mess up the ingredients, I can try again. Alright. Uh, let's see here. Well, let's see, by name, let's make a piano man. A piano man is too Adelaide. Three Bronson extracts. Five powdered powder delta. Five five flanner guide. And three carmatrine. On the rocks. And mixed. Nice. Here, happy? Yes, very. I stand corrected. Now, let's get working. Oh yeah, before I forget. Hmm? You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Oh, and if a recipe says it uses optional carmatrine, it means you can use none or fill it to the brim. Optional carmatrine doesn't count toward making a big drink, of course. 
Not retreating is the alcoholic factor in a drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. If you add too much of it, the client will get drunk faster, so please be mindful of that. Are you done with the exposition? Now I am. Yeah. Hey, guys. Oh, but... Eh? Uh, who's that? I don't know. Found her here while I was out shopping. Why bring her here? Well, it was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest or bring her unconscious body in here. She's gonna make such a ruckus when she wakes up. You know that. That's up for you to deal with. I'll be in my office. You can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. There are two of you. Believe in yourselves. <sighs> do you think Chief knocked her out? Nah, that's unlikely. She'd be crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. And it's not like her to pick on such a small girl. At least not unprovoked. Yeah, you're right. We'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to just be sleeping soundly, not comatose. Yeah. Okay then, time to start the night. Yes, yeah, so I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Um, come again? While you spent the whole weekend and Monday doing God knows what, we've had some interesting clients come in. Dogs, lots of them. You're joking. Yo, you've known me for how long now? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well... So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all that on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. Have fun. Just that? Fine, I see no problem. Where's the cleaning stuff? Here. You brought that from home, didn't you? That I did. Fine. With that out of the way, let's play some music on the new jukebox. This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled with songs before it can start. I wonder what what was the logic behind that decision. Alright. I think we can put it on shuffle, hmm? That's good for me. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, you! Get me a beer! Uh, oh, sure, right on it. He wants a beer. He looks like quite the big guy, though. He probably wants a big beer. Two... that all mixed here you go yeah this one's good pretty good in fact nice job um thanks I guess you're lucky I was in a meeting close by this hellhole could you certainly use a presence like mine although to be fair work has taken me to, me to worse hellholes like New Jersey the third huh what kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. The day started with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. So you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then. Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about that urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's. That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact that you write about the hacker. Just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. 
Well, first of all, I don't write about it. My interns do. The poor bastards think it will help them make full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of one article about a supposed hacker. But not all the daily stories about murders or other horrors. Oh, I always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add Glitch City's lowly citizens to the list. Lovely. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt from the lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get dissent these sentences. People get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. When I started in this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. That's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about, and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot, and even people like you. People who avoid the murder stories will see them. That brings money, and like I said, money's good. Uh, I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic too? Ah, oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. The worst part is about that is they know half of our clicks come from them, so... They get all diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. W what about... No, wait. I was thinking about another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column... Uh, um, shit. Forgot that brat's name. A restaurant, I believe that's... That kid. Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his columns what gets the least visited of the bunch. Gets less hits than the obituaries. Uh, however, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Wasn't this one then. Anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. Come right up. Beer again. This man likes his beers. They come cheaper in bulk at the store, though. Maybe he just wants the bar experience. We'll make it the same size. Here. Ah, it's the big things that make life worthwhile. What about the big troubles? Did I stutter, kid? Right. So, tell me. You see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. The place smells like soap and dog piss. I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. Who was that? Uh, nobody important. Hey, I heard that. Don't be so offended by what I say, kid. I'm insulting the building, not you. You could think of it as a small hole in hell rather than a hellish hole if you like. Charming. So, celebrities. Not really. At least, not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people. Especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks people pretend to love, but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? 
Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but that but what they really want to see is their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer, to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. Nah, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys, but nobody wants to admit to enjoying it. You thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living somebody else's. Sadly, I failed to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks and sandals or if they're dating God knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is practically a public indecency, but still. Ah, please. As a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers. This sounds hypocritical coming from you. Even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locales, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see they're human. Hey, that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating a behavior that shouldn't even be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, Brad? Well, two can play that game of... Uh, hmm? <laughs> hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat hellbent on world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe. Why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting. Half of our staff do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Uh, anyway. Eventually, the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you remember me from two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Did I say something wrong? Not at all. I, I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson or Boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal, uh, impersonal and cold. It is? Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather. It's too general. But Mr. Dawson? Donovan? Now that's more like it. They're re referring to me. To the man in front of them, not to my family. Not to my position as boss, to me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, gods, no. But I want them to fear me. Not because I'm their boss or the name appearing in their paychecks. But rather because I strike a mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me that. Oh yeah, you were asking something. What was it? 
drink another one. Do you? Ah, yes, yes. You know what? Third time's the charm. Give me a beer. All right. Third time's the charm for what? Ah. This is not a pleasant guy. I'm sure his employees love him. One beer. Beer's open, I don't pass out. Cheers. Enjoy. Say, kid, does this bar have any investors? He didn't call it a hellhole? There was some bloke named Sven that wanted to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there are no local investors. Hi. Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in the company. Well, that's... I mean, you give me money so you may make more. Let me do my thing and I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their noses and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for someone else? You still have to answer to unions, the government, and those kinds of organizations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. I make somebody else do it and call it a day. These losers ask for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they found offensive. And there's always that one guy or gal who says, Hey, why don't you do what that other newspaper does? Recently, they told me that they needed more clicks. More clicks. I make sure to keep stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up, but it's never enough for them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks? I'll give them more clicks. I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. They'll know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Should I be worried? Nah. At least he paid before storming off. I wonder what happened with Sven, though. We never heard from him again. Jill! Yes? What the hell happened to that bathroom? That kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs. Crafty dogs, I tell you. You'd think their short legs would hinder them. The, the ceiling, the sinks, the toilet, the vents. Shh, I wake up Briar Rose over there. I won't forget this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a client. Oh, welcome to Valhalla, what can I... Big gut punch. Fast. Uh, all right. He wants a gut punch. I want to give him a gut punch, all right. What is a gut punch? It's supposed to mean a punch made of innards, but the name actually describes what you feel while drinking it. All right. Said he wants a big one. That's a lot of Bronson extract. Optional karma train. I wonder what happens if we just give him a lot. Can I put more? I guess not. Aged and mixed. Here. Uh, you can actually do it then. Hmm. <laughs> this crack house is a bar. Hellhole, crack house. It smells like dog urine and soap. How the hell do you expect someone to feel comfortable in here? <laughs> what else do you expect a bar to smell like? I'm surprised you decided to come to our little crack house at all, mister. What the hell do you care? The payment registry says... Sorry for the question then, Mr. Ingram McDougal. McDougal? <sighs> Sorry about the smell. We're working on fixing it. There was an incident over the weekend. But it's Tuesday. Uh, 
please let me know what I can do to make your experience more pleasant regardless. If I pay you, will you come with me to a motel for a couple of hours? Gross. No. Then I have no use for you beyond giving me drinks. Such pleasant clientele tonight. May I ask why you decided to come to our bar then? Somebody recommended me this place and I have absolutely no idea why she likes it. She says she's a regular here and all. I'm starting to doubt her tastes. A regular? Can I ask who? No. Oh. I'll concede one thing. Whoever picks the music at least has decent taste. Thank you. Hey, Jill. Where'd you put that dish soap? Kills run out. Uh, below the sink where it's always been. Right. Oh, a customer. Good evening, sir. Hope you enjoy your stay at Valhalla. So, any other feedback you want to provide the establishment so we can enhance your customer experience? Uh, no, nothing. That's an interesting change of heart. I can't afford to slander this place knowing she's here. You know my boss? I don't know her, but I know who she is. Dana Zane, the Red Comet. The woman who fended off mall riders all by herself, knocking them out cold one by one. That's an achievement and a title I've never heard before. I know Boss did quite a few things before opening this bar, but that sounds... Would you happen to know how she got her mechanical arm? I heard a couple of stories, but they sound too fantastical to be true. Ah, you've had an interesting change of attitude. I saw that woman take out armed rioters with her bare hands. Once you see something like that, it's hard not to keep your mouth shut in front of them. Interesting. You can relax, though. I've only seen her deal with clients personally about two or three times. One involved Class 5 weaponry, and the other ha a pickup artist, and the latest an alpaca. An alpaca? Not really an alpaca, but... Uh, there's this woman that owns a textile company. She got really drunk and she started screaming that she was an alpaca. She started spitting on everything afterwards. My boss had to show her the door. I'd rather not remember that night, so let's leave it at that. Can I get you anything else? Give me a pile driver, please. Please. There's a word I haven't heard today. Coming right up. Once a pile driver, I honestly feel like suplexing them, though. Let me see. I might want to pick one. Here. Uh, it's fine, I guess. Hey, lady, have you ever faked an orgasm? Uh. I'm sorry, I think I heard wrong. I asked if you ever faked an orgasm. That's a question I'm not going to answer. I'll take that as a yes. I was just thinking about how good a lie can be. I mean, even the most sincere people lie once in a while. Lies can buy you time. Lies can make you happy. Reality will come crashing through the door eventually. But for that moment, that lie can give meaning to you. I say lies are like your porn stash. You know they exist, but you should acknowledge them. Does that mean you've really faked an orgasm? Because you look like you've had a lot of experience. The fuck? Uh, still, that's quite the random thought to just ha suddenly have. Are you perhaps lying about something right now? Not really. I was just thinking about people making polite comments about this crack house. Ah, of course you were. Hey, I'm gonna need another drink here. Already? Don't you think you're drinking a bit quickly? That's my problem, not yours. Give me a fringe weaver. Alright. It's 
like drinking ethylic alcohol with a spoonful of sugar. Interesting. I wonder how these few ingredients can make all these drinks. Try not to drink it too fast. That's up to me. Hey lady, have you ever felt empty? This guy is getting really existential today. Empty how? Like hungry? No, I mean empty like there's a part of you missing. Can't say I particularly have. I just feel like there's this part of myself that lacks something. An urge to get or do something that I just can't satisfy. Have you tried taking up a hobby? It might not solve your problems, but it might keep you busy enough to avoid thinking about it. Any suggestions? Well, collecting stuff, reading, bungee jumping, combat sports, exercising. Sounds a lot cheaper than the alternative. Which is? Bitches and alcohol. I tried sex tourism once. It was like a bloody Russian roulette of STDs, so I left midway through. I once burned my Christmas bonus hiring three women for an orgy. Porn is more amusing and way cheaper. I've also hired a girl to act like my daughter for a day for three years in a row now. What the fuck? Just gonna drop that? Nothing seems to do it. Uh, um... Have you tried rescuing a puppy? You can't fuck puppies. At least you shouldn't. I'm drawing a blank then. Can't think of anything that might help. I wasn't expecting you to help me, or to believe me. Huh? I could have been lying through my teeth this whole time. People lie, lady. Hmm. Anyway, I'm leaving now. This smell is killing me. Please come again. Don't count on it. Good. Phew. These people need therapy. Uh, boss, I'm gonna take my break. What does this do? Can I just click on everything? What is this? Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Alright. Hmm? Let's save after that intro. It's now safe to keep playing. What's with the cat girls? All right. <sighs> At least I didn't get locked up this time. This time. Ooh. It's kind of funky. Okay then, back in action. Um, good evening. Uh, good div- Uh... Um, w would you mind taking your helmet off? Oh, sorry. It's so comfortable I usually forget I have it on. Is this better? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, what can I get for you, miss? Uh, Master Specialist. Say P. Asagiri of the 765th Division Valkyrie Corps at your service. Oh, wait, that's too long. Just call me Say. Uh, what can I get for you, Say? Uh, let's see. I'm in the mood for a sweet drink. Oh, but not sweet as in cool. Although a cool drink would be nice too. Um, but not as cold as in great, and especially not as in big. Uh, okay, you want it sweet? Uh, 
Sweet, maybe cool. <laughs> Sweet and maybe cool, but not big. And more so since I have to get up early tomorrow and I can't afford a hangover. I'm sorry, did you get that? A uh, sweet drink, preferably a cold one that's not too big, right? Yeah, that's it. I can do that. Give me a sec. Okay. Well, there's plenty of sweet drinks. Small, sweet, and icy. Probably something with optional karma train. Maybe this one. Uh, well, it doesn't have ice. Let's try that again. Mm -hmm. This is hard to pick. Mm, I don't think it matters if it has Karmatrine or not. Four, five, six. Let's see, no relation to the Hadron Cannon you see on the moon for one week every month. Moon Blast. Here you are. Ah, yes, this is just what I needed. Thanks. Uh, we don't get many white knights as clients. I can only remember one other, in fact. Uh, you said you're from the Valkyrie Corps, right? Are you the guys who deal with riots and such? R riots? Oh, no, 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 no. You're thinking of the Blitzkrieg Corps. The one with huge plated suits, right? Uh, yeah, those. No, we're different people. I mean, we obviously we are different people, but we don't deal with riots or anything. In fact, you could say we deal with their aftermath. How so? Uh, to rescue, heal, and protect. We are the angels who soothe those suffering enemy attack. We are the light of hope in the darkness, darkest of times. The ones who assist the victims of crime. We watch, we protect. Um, wh what was that? Uh, sorry, it's sort of our pledge of allegiance. We are cited every morning. What it means is that our duties mostly include rescuing civilians, healing the injured, and protecting them from stuff. What kind of stuff? Burglars, rapists, car crashes, anything that might happen on our watch. You mentioned heal. Are you a doctor then? Nah, I know many doctors, but I'm not one. I'm more of a paramedic. I treat people so they can arrive safely at a doctor. I'm also kind of like a firefighter in that I sometimes rescue people from places. Damn, that must be a tough job. Sort of, but it's also really rewarding. I mean, I've yet to meet somebody that isn't glad to see me when I arrive. Uh, you must have seen some shocking sights. Yeah, this one time when I was saving some people from the top of a collapsing building. Jeez. I looked down and was blown away by how pretty the city was. It was like a starry sky on Earth. Oh, and there was this time we were cleaning up the aftermath of a car crash. Water was pouring out of a hydrant. With the lights and scattered pieces of glass, it was almost dreamlike. But that's not what I meant by shocking sights. Uh, no, but... No, but those are sights. And they're shocking, right? Uh, yeah, but... Never mind. Wait, did I miss here and you actually meant size? I mean, sure. 
I've suffered the deepest, longest, and most frustrated sighs from people after everything's said and done, but... Uh, don't worry. You didn't miss here. I guess I was just expecting a different kind of answer. Alright. Uh, does it matter what's on TV? Uh, what kind of answer? Don't worry too much about it. You finished your drink. Can I get you anything else? Ah, something classy. A classy drink. Can you be more specific? Uh, don't make it too big. Does that work? Sorry, I don't come to bars very often. My drinks usually come in a can. No problem. Don't worry. A classy drink, right? Let me see what I can find for you. I was thinking maybe a piano woman. It's also sweet. This isn't classy. Oh, which one was I thinking of? Oh, I see. Let's try that again. Oop. 8 out of 10 smug assholes would recommend it, but they're too busy being smug assholes. Here you are. This looks like something Stella would drink. Who? She's my dearest friend, and not that I don't have others, but she's the one I've known the longest. She likes these kinds of drinks, so I wanted to see what's so special about them. And what do you think? I was expecting something stronger. I like it quite a bit. Say, Miss Bartender, what's your name? Hmm? You know my name, now I want to know yours. Oh, sure. Just call me Jill. Jill. Hmm. Jill. Jill is short for Jillian. No, that's not right. Uh. Jillian. Ju Julianne. Do not call me Julianne, please. Uh. Um. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, no, please excuse me. I didn't want to anger you. Um, but why don't you like being called by your full name? It's a stupid reason. Don't dwell too much on that. Oh, okay. I still feel bad about angering you, though. Why? B because you look like a nice girl, Jill, and I don't like angering nice people. If it helps somehow, I really like this place. That actually helps. You're the first person to say something nice today. Thanks. What do you like about it? The smell of dog urine and soap. <laughs> My mom used to be a veterinarian, and I used to go to a clinic after school, so the smell takes me back. It makes me feel comfy and nostalgic. <clears throat> what made you become a white knight instead of a, a veterinarian or anything else? Well, I was never a good student, so studying medicine of any kind was out of the question. That aside, it's mostly because something that happened while I was a kid. A white knight attacked my friend and was coming for me when this other white knight saved us. I don't remember what happened next. I just woke up in a hospital with my friend watching over me. Oh, like a rogue knight? I mean, it wasn't prof a prophetic moment or anything like that, but ever since then, I felt this was my calling. That I wanted to help people the same way they helped me. Huh, it's interesting though. One would think being attacked by a white knight would make you run the opposite direction. Yeah, but it was another one that saved me. So I kind of guide myself toward judging everything on an individual basis. What if that's their recruiting tactic? Oh, well, not to be an extremist extent, but... Not to an extremist extent, but you get me. Yeah, I try to do the same too. Why join the Valkyrie Corps specifically, though? 
because I wanted to rescue people from dire situations whenever possible. And going into patrols and all that felt too tiresome. It's also the one with the least paperwork involved. Now that, now that I think of it, there are different kinds of white knights, right? I guess white knight is too broad a term. There's not one specific type, there are many different classes. Rescue, assault. There's even a squad full of bureaucrats. Really? Yeah, they get assigned to companies to handle the accounting and that kind of stuff. People usually ask for them because they speed up processes. But a few are assigned when a company is suspected of having weird, under-the-table deals. Interesting. There was also a squad dedicated to fighting school bullying. They were doing a nice job, but the fad of anti-bullying campaigns passed, and they lost their funding. I believe some members still work with anti-bullying cases in an unofficial capacity. That'd be nice, I think. Can I get you anything else? I don't know if I should. I can't afford that many drinks, and besides, I don't really know how much alcohol I can handle. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, you know what? I'll have something else. I remember some drink called a martini? Brantini. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it's martini. It's Brantini, trust me. I'll get you one. She wants a martini. Sorry, a Brantini. Brantini. Interesting. Why is there a drink called Bad Touch? What the fuck? Uh... What's slot one and slot two? Well, she already had a Brantini anyway. Uh, aged and mixed. Here, see? Ah, you're right. Thanks. You know what? I think I'll bring a friend of mine here in a couple days. Really? Why? I like the feel of this place, and I want to share it with her. It might be a bit difficult, though. She's more into, um, classier places. N not that this place isn't nice, but, but... Don't worry. I know the kind of, uh, kind of place I work in. I, I see. But it shouldn't be too bad. I just need to... What was that? Sounded like an explosion. I better check that. I paid you already, right? Yeah, go ahead. Be careful. I will. She left her helmet. Well, if she's coming back, I'll just hold it for her. I'll go check with the ever-loving how that explosion was. Careful. What? Oh, she woke up. Uh, wh where am I? Where am I? Uh, good evening and welcome to Valhalla. That might have not been the best thing to say. <laughs> she died and woke up in Valhalla. Uh, Valhalla? A am I dead? D does that mean I'm Uncle Angus's ramblings about the afterlife looking like a shoddy downtown bar are true? Called it. Afterlife? I I'm not dead? As far as I can tell, no. To be fair, I don't know how death or the afterlife work exactly, but you're breathing, right? <gasps> Alright, then where the hell am I? How did I get here? Who brought me here? What were you planning to do with me? Are you organ traffickers, robbers, rapists, pickpockets? You're pickpockets, aren't you? Why aren't you saying anything? I'm waiting for you to vent your worries. Otherwise, you'll just... You're rapist, aren't you? Rapist, the whole lot of you! You want to tear my clothes, beat me unconscious, have your horrible way with me, and then brutally murder me, don't you? Oh, I'm still violating every hole in my body as I lay there twitching, don't you? 
Murder, 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 murder. Interrupt me. Well, this is going nowhere. Let's see if I can get a drink to calm her down. Or to throw at her face. Jesus Christ. Alright, give her something that'll calm her down. Um... Maybe something classy? Classy and birder... sobering. Hmm. That might be nice. This one might knock her out of her shock. For I don't think we want any Karmatrine in there. All blended. Crevice spike. Oh, what is that? Uh, a drink. You're in a bar. Bar serves drinks. Par? So, I figured I should give you something to help you calm down. Don't worry, it's on the house. To calm down? What did you spice it with? Rupees? TTX? Pumpkins? Good God, no. I wouldn't even think of it. Y your stuttering makes you suspicious, you know. If I ever added anything like that to your drink, they dock my pay and tips. Not to mention I have to pay my lawsuits myself. And that's the best case scenario. I could get fired and lose benefits or go to jail. And trust me, the BTC loves to catch anyone who commits that particular felony. They'd show themselves all proud for a hefty PR boost. And the thought of going through all that is just... Ugh. Even if you say that, let's do something. If you go outside and head just three businesses to the left, you'll find a convenience store. They sell drug tests for drinks. Tell the cashier that Dana Zane sent you. <laughs> An actual Karen. Two flying cars crashed and went boom. That's why it's so noisy. Any damage? A hole in the street. Don't know about the drivers or anything. I see. Either way, I think I'm done here. Did you check inside the toilet paper's locker? What about... Oh my god! How? Why? What? How? I'm back. He tried to give me bandages at first, though. Did you have to pay? No. No problem, then. Try it on the drink. Hmm. That's negative. There you go. But you could be in cahoots with the clerk in the store. He even knew your name. Good point. But first of all, it's not my name. It's my boss's. Second, we are pretty much part of a chain. Sort of like the spicy chicken of bars. And finally, I'm not making you drink this. I offered it to you as a sign of peace. I mean, you are right. It is indeed suspicious on my part. Sorry. You can just ignore the drink, go through that door, and forget this ever happened. That would be it. You're at peace and nothing of value would be lost. Huh. Are you implying something won't have value because I ignored it? Are you saying my presence is so unimportant that my lack of action will yield no difference? Uh, huh? What about the drink? Are you going to let this fruit of your work go the waste so easily? No, I... Well, I'll let you know that I'm not unimportant and your work does matter. Uh, not sure you should drink it at all so fast. <laughs> so, how was it? Uh, it was fine, but not something I'd order normally. Hmm. Are you alright? Yeah, I guess you were telling the truth. Sorry about that. No problem. If I were you, I'd have probably reacted the same way. I should apologize for my last comment too. It came out as insensitive. I guess I'll stay a while. I need to get my thoughts in order. 
Can you tell me how I got here? My boss found you unconscious and brought you here for safekeeping. And you were asleep until that car crash outside. I, I see. I guess it's better to wake up here than on the streets stripped of clothes, dignity, and or organs. <sighs> How did you fall unconscious? Were you tired? Sick? I guess I'm sick, but I'd rather not talk about it. Of course. Tell you what, your drinks are on the house tonight. Why would you do that? Consider it an apology on behalf of everyone here for all the trouble we've caused you. Also, something tells me you might need another drink right now. Yeah, you might be right. Okay then, I'll take you on the offer. I'll have a piano man. Will you be fine? Yeah, I just gulped the last one, so I want to enjoy this one. Coming right up then. You'll see a woman pe asking for a piano man every day. Let's see here. Wait, am I missing it? Three of these. This is a classy drink. Oop. That's not right. Maybe I didn't mix it enough. There we go. Here. Yeah, this is the one. My dad used to drink these before an actual pianist attempted to kill him. Oh. Uh, what did he do? Your dad, I mean. To provoke the pian pianist like that. Got in place at the wrong time, I guess. He was relaxing in a bar when suddenly the pianist left off the stage and started punching him. Some say he was off his meds and that my dad looked like some music critic that had bashed him. I still hold my stance that he just got too excited. Jazz does that to you. Uh, I see. The Piano Man has an interesting story. It was originally created by a bartender in honor of a pianist friend of his that had just died. Apparently, it mixes all the flavors that friend liked the most. Oh, that's nice. So, this is how it feels to go for a drink at the end of the long, hard day of work. I'm not sure if I like the fact that I'm falling into that. Uh, where do you work, miss? Uh, call me Kim. I don't know if I can say I work yet, though. I'm still just an intern. Can I ask where? Have you heard of a newspaper called The Augmented Eye? I read it every morning. In fact, Donovan D. Dawson was here earlier. I knew I smelled his nasty cologne. That bastard leaves his reek wherever he goes. So, you believe me? I do. God, you have no idea how much I hate that chauvinistic horse blower. <laughs> Harsh words. The worst part is I, that I kind of admire the way he does stuff. He's so forceful about the things he wants that people have it done before they realize what's going on. He even got a pizza delivery boy to work server maintenance. A full week passed before the pizza shop where to ask where the hell he was. And would you believe it? The guy became decent at server maintenance, despite having no previous experience. It's kind of admirable, but at the same time, I hate his guts. Ugh. Knowing that I have to work for him is... Ugh. Why are you working there, then? <sighs> uh, did I ask something I shouldn't have? Uh, no, don't fret about it. I'd rather not talking about it, though. Fair enough. Uh, what's your name, bartender? Call me Jill. Is it hard to be a bartender, Jill? I guess it's as hard as being a cook somewhere. You keep going through the motions while trying to provide something of quality. All while answering the whimsy of people's orders. I think the hardest part is dealing with the chemical hazards some people might leave behind. Why? At one point I thought about being a bartender. But I was afraid they'd make me wear skimpy clothes and dance or something. Here we go again. 
Well, it depends on where you start working, you know? I guess I was lucky Valhalla didn't end up being a tacky disco overseen by a DJ with an afro. My boss just wanted a comfy place, I think. Your boss sounds like an interesting person. But what with wanting to put me somewhere safe and all that? She is. She's so cool and collected, but has no qualms about showing excitement about stuff. Sure, she's been a bit tense the last couple days. But even then, when you're with her, everything just feels under control. She also has this mechanical arm. I have no idea how she got it, but... <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I got carried away. It was fun to see you break the wise bartender character you're using here. I do that? It'd be nice to meet this boss of yours sometime and thank her. Uh, shall I call her? She'd be glad to know you're okay. Oh no, I shouldn't pester her that way. And besides, it's getting late and I don't want to abuse your generosity. You can ask for another one, although I don't know how much alcohol you can handle. I think I can handle another drink. One brandini, please. Coming right up. She wants a brand... Sorry, a mark... Yeah, a brandini. Yeah, that. <laughs> All aged to mix. What the hell's a martini? People these days, I swear. Here. This seems like the stuff. Cheers. Hey, Jill, was this job like a lifelong dream or something? Uh, not really. It just kind of happened. Uh, one thing led to another and bam, bartending. Do you regret not fulfilling a dream? Mm, the only dream I can remember being passionate about was buying a Model Warrior Julianne arcade machine. Can't say I've given up on that one yet. But alas, adult stuff needs to be paid for first. Hey, you've never had a dream you wanted to chase? Uh, not really. I mean, most of my dreams have been silly things or childish dreams. Childish dreams? Uh, having a room where every piece of furniture talks. Being a model warrior. Oh, childish dreams, yeah. I remember I wanted to live in a koi pond when I was seven. The fish seemed to be having a blast to me. So, no dreams? Uh, none that I felt particularly motivated to chase, no. I mean, I'm fascinated by AIs, but I just couldn't find it in me to study that. So, I picked something that I found nice and moved on. And somewhere along the way, I became a bartender. I see. Finally! Those dogs left a mess I'm not going to forget anytime soon. I mean, how the hell did they throw toilet paper out the window? Oh, a client. Good night, ma'am. Uh, Jill, I'm going to leave early. I need to take care of the smell clinging to my body. Sure. Um, who was he? A ghost. Nobody you should worry about. Uh, oh. I heard that. Who are you asking all those questions? Because now that I think about it, I don't really have a dream job or anything like that. I think we idolize the idea of a dream job too much. Not everyone walks around with a clear idea of what they want in life. Some take a liking to a job, others find it after many failed attempts. Sometimes life takes an unexpected turn that makes you change your plans. <sighs> What I mean is, don't worry too much about it. Maybe you're right. Well, I'm gonna take my leave now. Thank you for everything. Please thank your boss on my behalf. Bye. Thank you and come again. And that's it. Are we done for the night? Seems like it. Where's Gil? And where's the girl that was here? Gil cleaned the bathroom and left because he stank. Kim woke up. I had a couple of drinks and left. So she's called Kim. How did I how did she look to you? How was she? She was freaked out when she woke up, uh, but she managed to calm down. <sighs> Are you 
Are you worried about her? Wouldn't you be? I don't know. Hey boss, do you feel like calling you boss is too impersonal? Hmm? Not really, no. It's not like you call me that because I'm a stranger. Just out of habit. Oh. Anyway, you're free to go after you finish washing up the glasses. Let me transfer you, to, uh, you today's payment. Maybe I'll give Gil a small bonus for dealing with the bathroom. All right. An extra for helping that girl calm down. Hell yeah. No mistakes at all. Sweet. Okay. Jill is lost in thought about uh, a hollow plant. Buying it will prevent her from getting distracted. Huh. Okay, you can now browse danger. You can now visit JC Elton's. Weren't you gonna have curry to yesterday? A ghost took my money. I still got money. Well, I have money now. Whoops. That's not what I wanted. Hmm. Oh, I can shop now. Slut! <laughs> what? Wait a minute. I... What? Yeah, I want the hollow plant. Is that it? Hell yeah. Alright. Well, I think that's where we're gonna leave it for today. So, uh... Yeah. Most, most of this episode has been what I played on stream, but yeah, I've been really enjoying it. It's a lot of reading, of course, but I think I'll get used to it. I know it's been a while since I've read a visual novel or, or anything like that, so I had to be getting back into it. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next episode. Make sure to take care of yourself today, and I'll see you next time. Take care.